Hi, I'm Shirley Rose, and this is Joe Costello. Welcome to Balanced Health, Your Body, Your Choice, a show dedicated to helping baby boomers live healthier quality lives through a simple, balanced approach to health. Heart disease is the number one killer of both men and women in the United States. Yet many people don't recognize the early signs of a heart attack. And 63% of women who die from coronary heart disease had no previous symptoms, and Yikes. that's really scary. Yikes. But both modern and holistic medicine concur that there are things we can do every day to keep the heart healthy. Uh, Joe has our weekly dose of nutrition in the news, but in a minute, but first I want to just give you some statistics that are really shocking. And by the way, we're so happy to have Dr. McKeever here with us again. Thank Welcome, you, Dr. McKeever. Nice to be here. It was so wonderful having you the other show that we did together, and so we're, we're looking forward to hearing from you more uh, today. But you were telling me some things, and we, we have some statistics I want to give. Every 20 seconds, someone in the United States has a heart attack. Every so 20 since the seconds. the show started, there's two. Well, yeah, at least. And one in four Americans has some form of heart disease. Every 34 seconds, someone in the U.S. dies of heart disease. But listen to this. This is unbelievable. Heart disease takes more lives than the next 16 leading causes of death combined. That would be all forms of cancer. You know, that, that is amazing. It's and this one, yeah, and this one Dr. McKeever just gave me. If we could eliminate heart disease, the life expectancy would go up 10 years. If we could eliminate all cancers, the life expectancy would only go up three years. And yet cancer is the thing that we're so afraid of, and heart disease is the thing that's, that's killing Americans. It's, it's amazing. Well, Shirley, in, in that battle against um, heart disease, and what we're finding out is something that is not really new on the scene, but something that uh, is becoming more prevalent, and that is called CRP. CRP is an acronym for C-reactive protein. That's what we're going to talk about today, nutrition in the news. C-reactive protein is a plasma protein produced in the liver in response to inflammation. Because narrowing of the arteries goes hand in hand with inflammation, elevated CRP is considered an important warning sign that cardiovascular problems may be in the works. So, one of the things we want to do is avoid this inflammatory response in the body. This is an interesting study. Researchers have associated weight loss, exercise, no surprise there, yeah. and an intake of vitamin C and omega-3 fatty acids with a reduced risk of inflammation and consequently reduced levels of CRP. Mm. And one thing we always got to be careful of in studies is studies give predominantly what we call relative values, which means if they say there's a 20% less, it, it, it reduce your chance of a heart attack by 20%. Okay. What it doesn't give you is the absolute value. So what does that mean? If your chances of a heart attack to begin with were 1 in 10, and you just reduce them by 20%, now your uh, chances are more like, say, 1 in 14, mm -hmm. okay, or 1 okay. in 12, I'm sorry, uh, 2 being 20% two being of, uh, of 10. And relative values, if you only had a 1 in 10 chance of having the, having the heart attack to begin with, and you just decrease it by, uh, by 20%, what is your, still your overall wow. chance of having a heart attack? Pretty that's low, what those, huh? Well, that's what these things don't really tell us. Yeah. So we, they leave out these absolute values, and, and we always get these relative values. The point, though, is still this, and I think this is what's key. Um, the fact that things like weight loss, exercise, and supplements, nutritional, e eating properly, mm -hmm. like omega-3, um, actually reduces the risk of inflammation. Uh, doctor, what I'd like to do here is throw to you and say, to talk about CRP, talk about this inflammation, and uh, we'd like your take on what you think about these studies that show supplements or nu nutrients in food reducing those, those uh, risks. And can I just ask before you answer that, how do you know what your levels are? How, how, is, that, how is that evaluated? Well, you, you could take on a, a blood work. Unfortunately, a lot of times it's often taken when you think someone's having a heart attack, right? Mm. Yeah, it, it's a blood test uh, that's okay. measured. Uh, it, CRP is what we call a, an acute phase reactant. So um, any inflammatory process will raise the CRP, and we've measured, used CRP to look for inflammation for many years. Um, a, a large study was done uh, in the last few years that showed that a high percentage of patients who had a CRP, an elevated CRP, were destined to get uh, coronary events. Um, the reverse is not, is not known, though. If we treat for high CRP, will that translate into lower mm, okay. cardiac, cardiovascular events? And the answer is, we don't know. Hmm. The study really hasn't so, been done. So really kind of, does it really benefit us so to know So it's good for epidemiologic studies. 
um, but we don't use it in the in day-to-day -day practice for individual patients because it, it, it we don't really know what to do with the information. Hmm. Um, if it's elevated, you, you worry, but what, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. The, the more tried and true uh, preventive uh, things that we do, measuring cholesterol, uh, if that's elevated, treating that uh, will decrease your inflammation. Uh, keeping your blood pressure down will decrease mm -hmm. your inflammation. Um, so th the other risk factors that we traditionally uh, measure and then treat will affect the CRP in a favorable way. Mm. But those, those other things that you're talking about, um, when you take in this blood work in an unremarkable setting, you know, just in an office environment, that's one whole scenario. When you think somebody might be having a heart attack, or they think they might, they come into the ER, they do an EKG, that's normal. Um, enlighten me on this, they do, they draw some blood and they look for a particular elevated enzyme. I might not be asking the right, but that, yes. that enzyme being elevated might indicate a heart attack when in fact some, an EKG might not? That's right. Uh, the enzyme that they, there, there are several enzymes that leak out of the heart when the heart is damaged during a heart attack. And these enzymes are then measured in the bloodstream and, and if they're elevated, they're a clue that there has been damage to the heart, recent damage. There's several enzymes, tr troponin, CPK, SGOT. They're, they're, they're proteins that are in the heart cells that leak out mm. when the heart gets damaged. So will that, will that elevated reading, say in an ER setting, will that send you to the next level of intervention? Absolutely. Okay. That's a heart attack, and uh, time is muscle. Yeah. So the sooner yeah. we treat the heart attack, the less muscle that is lost. Well, that's probably why when I went to Edward Hospital, to, because I thought I might be having one, the first, first thing to do is take blood. What you thought <laughs> was, that, and that's yeah, why like, I brought why that up. Why are they it's taking the viewers blood? Saying, well, you know, why would they yeah, draw exactly. blood? That's exactly yeah. what they were doing. They yeah. were measuring for... Interesting. Well, in order to get your body to the fat burning zone in a workout, you have to reach your maximum target heart rate. Or do you? After the break, Joe's going to explain why you may be able to start your cool down a bit earlier. Stay tuned for Debunking the Myths. We'll be right back.